Okay, then uh, we go straight to an example, how to draw the flow net. So this is an example based on the question. So the figure one here shows the cross sections of a line of sheet piles. So this is the uh, the front view or the side view of the uh, cross section. So actually we have a line of sheet piles. So at the back there, so you will have a line of a sheet pile. All right. Okay, so this is the cross section. All right, so we want to focus uh, on these cross sections. All right, now, uh, that sheet pile driven to a depth of 7 meter. So this is the 7 meter. Okay, into a stratum of homogeneous sandy soil. Okay, so this is the layer of sandy soil, which has the thickness 12 meter here. And it was underlain by impermeable stratum. So below the sand soil, we have an impermeable stratum or layer. From an original depth of 5.5 meter water level here at the upstream, okay, 5.5 meter. And on one side of the pile is reduced by pumping to a depth of 0 0.5 meter. So here is 0 0.5 meter. So the reductions uh, that cause heat uh, flowing adalah H equivalent to 5 meter. 5.5 minus 0 0.5. 5.5 minus 0 0.5. So you will have H. Five meter. Okay, now uh, given the coefficients of permeability k is seven point two exponent negative three. So already given the permeability of the soil of the sandy soil seven point two exponent negative three. What we need to do now is to determine the quantity of seepage. So in order to get the seepage symbol is Q. In order to get the seepage, so we need to draw the flow net. So by from the flow net, you can determine the quantity of seepage. And also from the flow net, we can determine the pore pressure in the soil. So now in this question, uh, we need to know, we need to determine the pore pressure at point P and Q as shown here. Okay, now let's start with this example. So, so this is how it looks like that water will flow from the upstream. Okay, well, from the upstream to the downstream. Yeah. So, kita akan uh, interpret the in the flow net. So, this is again to determine the quantity of seepage, we need to draw the flow net. Because from the flow net, so we need to, from the flow net, so we need to know the NF here and also the ND here. What is an F? The number of flow lines and ND is the numbers of equipotential lines. So, first and foremost, okay, you, we need to redraw. Okay, look at here that we need to redraw. Redraw back the structure given in this question. Okay, redraw the structure which is this sheet pile in this question and the soil layer with suitable scale. So, we have 5.5 meter, 12 meter, 7 meter, 0 0.5 meter here. So, we need to sketch redraw again redraw properly with suitable scale okay on your graph paper okay i prefer graph paper because it's more easy to control later on the, sh the shapes of the flow lines all right so for example here i'm using one cm equivalent to one meter because we can fit on the graph paper the seven meter the 12 meter let's say if we have a uh, more values 30 meter here let's say so we need to use this pro proper scale, for example, 2 cm equivalent to 1 meter. So, it depends on the uh, dimension given in the question. Okay, so I assume that the grid line uh, on this screen is a uh, graph paper. So, the square here will represent 1 cm at the horizontal and 1 cm, 1 cm in the vertical. Okay. Alright, now we draw first the sheet pile. Okay, so you need to make your graph paper horizontally or landscape your graph paper. And then you redraw the structure of sheet pile in the middle of your graph paper. Put it in the middle. Okay, you draw the sheet pile in the middle. Alright, and then uh, how to control the height of the sheet pile. Make sure firstly we have 7 meter here. Okay, but then you need to prepare first 
the 5.5 meter, 12 meter. Okay, let's say you have uh, for the upstream level, 5.5 meter, as you can see here. So, the first grade here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this is 0 0.5, which is 5.5. Since I'm using 1 cm equivalent to 1 meter, so 5.5 cm is equivalent to 5.5 cm. So, complete all the dimension, prepare all the dimension. So, at the uh, downward uh, layer, okay, lower layer of this water, 0 0.5. And then for the sandy soil is 12 meter, which is 12 cm. So once you have this complete, so make sure that your sheet pile was driven 7 meter. So you have half, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and half, 7. So in total, 7 meter. Okay, now you have complete uh, layout of the structure and the soil layer okay now let's plot the let's draw the flow net okay so draw the flow line first okay we need to draw the flow line first okay that if we draw like that since there is no um a gap all right for the flow of water directly touched to the ship pile so that one is not correct so make sure have some a gap for the flow net it means that uh, uh, an area for uh, the water to flow so you will have another flow lines and also you can have more than two flow lines okay so now if you can see here that let's say this is the boundary of AB. So make sure that your flow line not exceed the boundary of AB. It can touch the boundary AB, but it cannot exceed the boundary AB. So you cannot to have like this. This one is uh, wrong. So make sure that at least it touch to the boundary of AB. Alright. Okay, now you can proceed with the equipotential line. So I prefer to start at the bottom of the sheet pile in order to control the shapes uh, later on because we need to produ produce curvilinear square. Remember that we need to produce curvilinear square. Okay, yes. Okay, we cannot have rectangular. We should have curvilinear square. So we can continue. All right your equipotential line so one more thing that you need to remember that try try to control the gap between one flow line to another flow line with the same uh, gap all right because we want to control the uh, the size here same goes to the equipotential line make sure you have uh, the, the gap between another equipotential line to another potential line uh, about the same because we want to produce the curvilinear square. All right. <coughs> okay. And also uh, be very careful. So let's say this is boundary of C and D and the brown color line at the top here. That one is also the boundary uh, for the top line. So you cannot exit. Okay, let's say you do, you cannot you cannot have this kind of equipotential line. This one is wrong. Okay, it must not exceed the boundaries C and D. All right, it can touch. For example, if you have uh, another cases. Okay, but then you cannot exceed the boundary of C D. Okay, that is for the low net.